two exorcisms. One with people, you know, tick, 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 all over him. Put himself into debt and even became suicidal in hopes that he could cure, watch this, or liberate his homosexuality. <laughs> Take a look at this. When I was a teenager, I decided to pursue reparative therapy because the messages I got from society was basically that if you're gay, you're bad, you're sick, you're going to hell. And I didn't want to be a pervert. I didn't want to be evil, sick. And so I would do anything to fix it. There was this terrible sense of self that I had, a terrible sense of self that I feel that the ex-gay movement preys upon. I spent 17 years and over $30,000 on three different continents attempting to become a heterosexual. In my mid-20s, I got married to a woman, and the problem was it was very difficult for me to have sex without thinking of other men. I ended up cheating on my wife with other men, then lying to her, betraying her, almost led me to suicide. In my attempt to become free from homosexuality, I had three different exorcisms in hopes of releasing the demons of homosexuality from me. I was willing to go anywhere and do anything to fix this. So why did you start reparative therapy? This was nothing that anybody, your parents didn't try to make you do this. Nobody came to you and said you need to do this. You just said to yourself, well, I was terrified. I was terrified of what was called the gay lifestyle, which the, the lie that was given to me was that if you're gay, you're going to have a lot of sex with a lot of strangers, you're going to be lonely, you're going to be miserable, you're going to get a disease, you're going to die, and you're going to go to hell. And when I was hearing that message, it, it wounded me deeply because it said, okay, if you want to love God and serve God, you've got to get this thing fixed. And I love God with all my heart. And, and I said, all right, whatever it takes, I don't care how crazy it is, I will go whatever length to please God. You were so radically Christian for a while. Your, your family almost threw you out because you were always proselytizing rather than and, and not talking about homosexuality, correct? That's right. You they, were coming they were. in, <laughs> preaching, everybody. Nobody could get a break from you. You had to pray with right. right? That's right. I was the, the teen evangelist, and my, I terrorized my family. I was the guy in front of the abortion clinics saying, you know, I, I, because when I had my conversion, it wasn't just a spiritual conversion, it's a cultural conversion. And, and what Alan is talking about, the gay lifestyle, what is this gay lifestyle? There are thousands of gay lifestyles. There are senior citizens gay people. There are religious gay people. There are lesbian moms. But that was all hidden from me. Because to me, to be gay meant you had to be dirty. And so it always was something dirty for me. But I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't allow myself to have a good relationship because the lie I was given was that if you're gay, you're a dirty person. You got married. I did. I went through a lot of therapy and prayer. Um, and, and two became, exorcisms. Two. Actually, I had three exorcisms. At that, by this time, before you got married. Yeah, before we got married, I had two at that point, yes. Because, and, 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 and Alan and, Ex and Exodus probably wouldn't endorse such a thing, although it was an Exodus ministry where I got one of those, those exorcisms. Uh, exorcisms here in New York City. Uh, and, uh, and I would do anything in my power to change. And so we got married thinking that God could fix anything. And we really believed it and we trusted God. And, and this is the thing that gets me. Peop there are people who get so wounded by this ex-gay stuff who are on the sidelines. The wives who are suddenly left after 18 years of marriage. Parents who want the best for their kids and they're afraid that if my kid's gay, they're never gonna be happy. And, and then the parents end up being blamed for having a queer child. What turned this around in your mind to make you accept who you are or make you say, I'm gonna stop trying to cure this, fix this, liberate this? Part of it was exhaustion. Part of it was actually something I learned in the last ex-gay program I was in. Mm -hmm. They said a definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And I thought, Hmm. <laughs> and they also said, if this isn't working, try something different. And I said, you know what? I have been struggling with addiction all my life. What if I just accept myself for who I am? What happens then? And it's amazing the sort of freedom that I always wanted was there once I embraced who I was. You know, I can see the church wanting to change promiscuity. That's a good message for heterosexuals, homosexuals. And if, if that's their message, that's a good message. And there's freedom from promiscuity. But promiscuity is not homosexuality. Those are two different things. Let me take a break. We'll be back right after this.